Freer in episode 3. 27 years after the death of Himmel the Hero in the trade city of Warm. You know what's interesting? Like one thing I've thought about in terms of travel as it relates to adventure. I've traveled a lot and I do love it, but travel doesn't necessarily mean adventure. It means like going somewhere. In the real world travel adventure things that I love from shows, movies, and games, the travel is almost a byproduct of the mission and the mission is the adventure. That's not always necessarily the case with going to a new place. Aside from maybe the, the just general thing of like, I want to see a new place and try new food, etc., which is amazing and great, but like kind of lacks both the stakes and the danger that are often vital pieces of that whole adventure thing. I was actually just talking to a friend about this because he's thinking about moving abroad and he mentioned like saving up for it. And my advice was it would be so much cooler and so much more meaningful if you made the goal to not have it be from savings and have it be like I'm going there to live a potentially perpetual life on my own two feet with my capabilities. Like I am going to land there and like conquer it and make a life for myself with my own two hands because that adds stakes and I think is an adventure if it's something that excites you is a challenge would push you would force you to use your ingenuity and would enable you to have this moment of success where you're like, wow, I'm doing this. I'm making it work as opposed to it being a temporary vacation. Not that there's anything wrong with that either. What made me think about this now is that free range is like, it just seems content just wandering around. I mean, yeah, she's gathering uh, spells, but it's more of an open-ended thing. It's not really like a grand mission to defeat an enemy or evil. It's very leisurely, like extremely leisurely, like 50 years on this side quest, what have you. I'm going to collect flowers until Fern dies. <laughs> have I not been paying attention or did she get really big? <laughs> <laughs> How's she gonna buy it? With tea? <laughs> she gets paid in tea. It's the only currency she has. Now she's buying tea with tea. More importantly, how are you gonna put that in your luggage? Oh, she's a shopaholic. And she's a hoarder. But like hoarding this suitcase, there's gotta be some kind of spell. Like, I don't know, one of those video game spells that lets you have a huge inventory that you never see on the character. Damn, here we thought Freerun was gonna like take care of Fern, but it's Fern. Fern is the adult in some ways, taking care of Freerun. There's gonna be some magic to it. It's an amulet or whatever after all. Pendant. Are you joining our party? Cats live about 13 years, so that's like 1% of one of Freerun's missions. This cat will never see the end of the episode. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's like, you know what? It's probably a gift for Fern. Is it her birthday or something? This might sting. Fern's all like, oh, I don't want her to be wasteful. It's maybe for her? That's my guess. My working theory. <laughs> oh man, these guys just fell right out of the book of anime thugs. Sweets Oh, they're not right out of the book of anime thugs. They're like really nice guys that like sweets. Go figure. Another trope subverted. Never judge a book by its cover, etc. <laughs> was the struggle she was having buying a gift for her? For... Is that a question or? <laughs> it really seemed like she was asking. She just left. That's nice. What was the and also for stalking you, following you? Wow, you know that's tough for a splurger. 
<laughs> it's funny. It's like, I know my dad so well and his eating habits. I know what he's going to have before I know what I'm going to have typically. Actually, I think there are a couple people for whom I can say that. It can be a really nice feeling sometimes when people notice things about you that you don't even know about yourself, depending on how insecure it makes you. One time I had someone point out to me that I love making lists and I hadn't even noticed. Just in the normal span of conversation, I was like making all these lists. And also I realized when she said it that like my life revolves around lists. Like one of my hobbies at the time was watching the IMDb Top 250, which I eventually completed. I write down travel checklists and I have a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly checklist of goals, <laughs> lists of restaurants I want to try, lists of movies to watch, books to read. I think I get more utility out of the lists than I do out of the actual <laughs> activities. But there was something so sweet about her noticing that about me. It's like she's watching, like she's really paying attention and cares to the point that she used sufficient energy in her consciousness to synthesize information based on data and then present me with new knowledge about myself. I don't know, it sounds silly to say, but there was something really profound about that for me. And on the other side of that, it's really nice when you notice something cool about other people and you get to be the one to tell them, you know? ちなみに僕の好物はルフオムレツ。俺はブドウだ。酸っぱいほどいい。私は酒だろ。We you know. <laughs> we all knew that from the first episode. Also, I love that that's food. なぜ謝るのですか? It's going to take a long time. 私はフェルンのこと何もわからない to reconcile. Oh yeah, that's why she was conflicted. It wasn't about the buying it. It was about, is it right for her? That's sweet. I also misjudged. Yeah. How did you forget? I don't even come to think of it. Well, it's also how much it's clear that she cares. Ooh, that could be really painful though. I mean, it's a positive thing, but like, I don't know why. It hit me kind of sadly. Because there have been times in the past where I wasn't taking into account other people's natural gifts and, and predispositions. They were doing things badly, but it was too much of me thinking like myself, not thinking about them. And not evaluating it that way and realizing how much they really cared, how difficult that must have been for them to do or try. I don't want to be too specific here, but I have a relative who is very particular about certain things, especially media that he likes. And one time when I was a kid, he took me to see the movie Independence Day. And I was like, it's odd. Like Independence Day is an odd choice for him. There must be some obscure actor that he wants to see or, or some connection to somebody he knows. Otherwise, there's no way we'd, we'd be here. And I said something like that to him. I'm like, what is it? What is in this movie for you? And I realized later that like he was trying to bond with me. He was trying to pick a movie that I liked. And I just threw that right in his face. You know, he probably hated the movie. <laughs> But he sat through it with me. Also, that ends well. We have a great relationship, but <laughs> punishing people for doing really pure hearted, loving, open things is like, it's the worst. When you end up in those situations, you realize the person that you should be judging is not the other, but yourself. You're the one missing it. This is such a classic thing in relationships, too. The concept of love languages is so important. It's so easy to focus on the things you're not getting that the person's not doing, all the ways they're failing, and missing all of the wonderful gifts that they're giving to you, trying to give you, because that's just how they see gift giving through their lens. I've definitely been on the other side of that where people accuse me of like not caring, not doing it up. And I'm like, look at how much I'm doing, you know? And not even because I have to or not because I am trying to like win something from you. I'm happy to give these things I'm giving because it's the way that I'm expressing my my feelings for you. And it sucks that you can't see that, you know? And take zero utility from it. <laughs> What a shame. The great thing for Freya, and I'm sure she'll come to this eventually, she has a lot of guilt about this, yes, because she's coming into this realization sort of late. But like the people she was traveling with, they got it. They saw who she was. And obviously there, there were moments where she showed her appreciation for them in her very free run way, given the stage she was at of her life and development. Which, you know, given elf years, who knows, she could have been like five in human equivalent. <laughs> That's kind of what I was saying in the beginning of the episode. <laughs> I feel like one will emerge, but I mean, it also doesn't really have to. Mm. I mean, that's big. It's not a like big demon, but it's like closure. Just trying to answer questions that are coming to the surface. Alright, so it's not just me. She, she is growing. It's the magic of DNA. Episode 3, Killing Magic, what? <laughs> oh yeah, let's do some training. Magic looks so cool, despite how little we've seen of it. Maybe that's her role. Okay, glad you held back on that one. There's no room for like real kindness or over sweetness. 
your life's at stake in these battles. Hmm. It's funny because I'm like right now watching this exact thing in Hunter x Hunter with, uh, what is it, Kyo? Ken? I don't read the books I read. 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 You can just tell it to me? <laughs> like, just tell me. You don't gotta assign me homework. Well, I mean, she's her teacher. It's not like we're exactly pressed for time here. Maybe they can do the audiobook while they're walking. Sometimes I get minorly irritated by people like they want to tell me an idea, but instead of just telling me the idea, because it ends up being pretty simple, they sent me like a 50 page text or document or like a 45 minute YouTube video. It's like you could have just told me what you wanted me to take away from this in a sentence. Sometimes actually what that shows is that it's not about the information. It's that the person had a certain feeling about that thing. They don't know what they got out of it. They just like it. They want you to be synchronized with them so they send it to you. Speaking of like not understanding love languages, that's probably what's happening that I'm doing right now. Odd spells and tea. Okay, just tea then. Oh. For someone very introverted, she has very, very low social anxiety. She just is all up in there all the time. She's very self-contained, self-generating source of confidence. This time alone. Wow. Himmel just was that guy. He was a real one. He just missed her. He was right. Speaking of knowing her, believing in her. Like I said, I don't think she's cold. It's not any kind of meanness or anything. She has a good heart. She just is a lot more relaxed about its interpretation. Very confident. I guess Qual wasn't all that. Corruption does seem like sort of a lesser demon. Oh, this is more alarming. This lines up pretty well with the training we've been doing. Wow. Give me that book. I need to read up on theory. I think you're giving her a good reason to read it, though. Yeah, there it is. Uh oh. Are you sure about this? This is a good idea? Maybe stand over there? Wow, this is some real training. It's high stakes. Hopefully he hasn't had time to, th or wasn't able to think in there. Some, some sense of time. <laughs> They're just like colleagues. Oh wow, she's that strong? Let's talk shop for a bit. Wow, that's true. I see. It's old tech. That's true. If it's been 80 years, that's like what? Like a Civil War musket? Once the most powerful, most devastating weapon imaginable. Hmm. That might be what defeats him. Be defeated by embarrassment. Well, Freebirds, like, hasn't used anything yet. She's committed to making this a training exercise. I guess she's just bad at control. Oh, that's so cool. We're finally getting like a double mage battle. Or triple. He's making her use a, a wide defensive spell to drain them. Yeah, she's not there. Oh, damn, using his own magic against him. That's beast. She just learned it. When you power scale with yourself. There's a metaphor here somewhere. 
I also like that they seem to be avoiding the whole like, you know, light magic, black magic thing. Just magic. He never changed his hat in 80 years. Oh, that it went from honorable to creepy real fast. Gee, I wonder if he liked her. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, that much is clear. I think they all did. All of them saw something in her. Wow, that was a really nice episode. So far, I wasn't at all missing action or, you know, think it was something that was lacking in the show. But it was really cool to see in this episode. Also because I think it had something behind it. Like it's the, you know, the memories. Everyone is kind of looking for herself through the recollection of her past and treading old ground. Doing the same thing, but with new eyes. Being the observer of herself, in a sense. But also it's her connection with Fern. And I haven't figured this out completely, but there's definitely metaphorical meaning to the fact that she used the, the killing spell against the creator of the killing spell. I mean, for one, it mirrors exactly what I was just saying about the journey, where she's back in the same place but a totally different person her skills are so far beyond what she was back then and she's more of a person than she was back then very generally there's something there about learning things from that which you fear or can't defeat it also just happens to be badass it makes fear look like total killer that she's this good at what she does that she's this much of a master she's letting her pupil do most of the heavy lifting until she pulls out the big guns the dual timeline thing this is not at all as cool but i've lived in korea twice now for about the same length of time each time with about a five-year gap in between and obviously there are a lot of parallels and similarities to my life now as it was then the first time around but it's also very different because i'm different and it does come up a lot like i see ghosts not literal ghosts but when i go to certain haunts and go to certain places i am like transported back while simultaneously being in the new version of the thing it's pretty cool it also makes me sound old because with younger people i start every sentence with back in the day <laughs> but i get it you know i get the retreading old ground the same i think is true for memories you know like you have a certain concept of what things meant when you're young before you're you're fully developed and you might take a certain meaning out of it and that meaning was probably the most useful meaning you could have taken at the time Time, given your intellect or whatever your resources at your disposal but it can be so cool to revisit those things later with a more refined more developed view of the world and how things work you can go much deeper and get much richer takeaways and if it happened to be a traumatic thing or a painful thing oftentimes find that the real meaning or utility and like close that chapter square that away which i guess the parallel here would be defeating the demon instead of sealing it rather than just having it sealed because you can't fully cope with it yet very cool stuff <laughs> <laughs>